up, P9. Very good race, you will. Hey guys, welcome back to the Jules Bianchi Tribute Career Mode. Before I start, I would like to apologise for the slight delay in this episode compared to the last episode. But I've just been busy for the last couple of, couple of weeks. As you can see here, I've made one change to the setup. We're going to have dynamic weather from now on. So let's get started for round three. Welcome to Sakir for the start of the Bahrain Grand Prix. We hope you're ready for an exciting evening's action. Let's take a look at the grid positions for today's race. This time we're starting in 19th place ahead of both Caterham, so hopefully we can get a good start and do well in this race. Force India making an appearance in the top 10 there. Looks like we've got a 2 by 2 formation from the top 8 with the Mercedes in front with Nico Rosberg on pole this time. Alright, we're on the grid here in Bahrain for the first night race of the season. This is going to be the strategy for today. Start on the option tyre, going to lap number 6 for the prime tyre. So fingers crossed we can do well. This is actually one of my favourite race tracks, so hopefully that will be a good sign for things to come. Alright, the mechanics are gone. We're ready to start the race. We've got two, three, four, five red lights. And we're in, away in the night of Bahrain. We've got trying to get past Esteban Gutierrez on our right on our right hand side, but looks like we're going to be forced down the left hand side of the circuit, unlike the past two races. Look at Gutierrez making loads of positions up, going down the inside. I try and follow him through. There's not enough space into turn one. We've made contact twice with the Lotus. I think that's Maldonado. We're going to try and go around the outside of the Lotus. We've made contact again with Maldonado. I don't know whose fault that is, but probably it is Maldonado's fault because it is Maldonado. He's just ahead of Sutil there. We've managed to maintain P15. We're going to dive bomb two cars. I think that was Kvyat and Gutierrez into turn four as we start the second sector of the first lap. We're now up into P13 as we start the second sector into my favourite part of the circuit. The left and right hander, or sorry, the right and left hander, my apologies, into the deep braking right hander. We've gone past Perez into P12. I think that's turn eight as we head into the trickiest part of the circuit with the very challenging braking zone, turn 9, 10. We're going to take it quite cautiously for the first lap. We hit the bollard there. We might have compromised our exit. Look at that. Hulkenberg is pulling away from us. Perez is a lot closer to us than we are to Hulkenberg. So we're going to maintain P12 as we go into the deep braking zone. As you can see here, Hulkenberg... I don't know what, what happened here, but it looks like we're going to have a good, good run down the inside of Hulkenberg. But now we're going to go right around the outside as we head into Sector 3. Very nearly going off the track there, so it could have been an illegal overtake, overtaking beyond the track limits. We've got away with that. It looks like we were on the track. Anyways, we're now behind the McLaren of Kevin Magnussen as we come towards the end of lap number one. We've got a good drive. I think Magnussen understeered slightly wide out of that corner, but I'm not 100% sure why we're suddenly very close to him. But look at this, we're going to try and stay in the slipstream due to the Mercedes power being more powerful than our Ferrari engine. Looks like, look at that, we can't even get past at the moment, but we're going to go down the inside into turn one for a very simple move for P10. Cutting onto the middle of lap number two, we've gone wide going into the turn nine, 10 section. That should maybe possibly to try and avoid the Ferrari in front of us, which is Kimi Raikkonen as we headed on to the second straight where the DRS zone would be until the next lap. As you can see, we're going to have a good braking going out of the corner. We're going to go down the inside of Raikkonen before Sector 3. We've done very well there to get into P9 before the end of the second lap. As you can see, we're now going to try and get past the McLaren Jetson Button. Button defends the inside line and we're forced to go the long way around. We've lost a little bit of time because of that. That was good defensive driving there from Jensen Button. But very good that the AI are able to fight us a little bit more. Raikkonen looked like he was going to have a move, but he looks to have backed out of it. As we've gone down right around the outside of Jensen Button but prior to the main start finish straight. I was very surprised I managed to get up into P8 there. But as you can see, we've got up to lap number three. This is where it does go a bit wrong. As we try and go down the inside of Fernando Alonso into turn eight, I think I've got the move done. I don't think Alonso's there, but look at this. We've crashed. We're out of the race. We are out of the race. This is not good. No, we're not actually. We're going to show a replay and I'm going to flash back. But this is what actually happened. I got on the inside. 
Looks like Alonso got a good drive out of turn 8. And I didn't leave enough room. We are going to use a flashback to re reset this. To try and prevent this incident from happening. As you can see, I very need to lose the car going to turn 8. Alonso seems to know I'm coming this time around. Rather to P7. No, I'm not actually. Alonso just got good drive once again out of turn 8. Like in the previous thing prior to our crash. In the original original setup before the flashback. He's going to try and stick with Alonso going into the DRS zone. It looks like Alonso's got DRS from the car in front. I think that's a Williams in front. We're going to, as we go into turn 11. We look at this. We're going to go down the inside of Alonso like we did with Reitlin. So with two Ferraris in the same corner, I've managed to pass both of them. Ferrari didn't really scout me out very well. As we can see, we're now trying to get past Massa. Massa defending the inside line like Jensen Button did. We've got a better drive, though, going out of that corner as we head on to the back straight prior to the main straight as we head into the final corner we've got a good run into the final corner prior to the DRS zone we've made the move stick it was nice and clean unlike the previous time we're up into P6 now we're going to cut onto lap number 4 I'll show you something quite interesting that happened as I make a braking I get the braking slightly wrong here as we go off the circuit I get a warning for exceeding track limits I've never seen that before that's a quite a good touch that actually by Codemasters to include that in the game I've never seen that before. That's quite an interesting mechanic. But anyways, we're going to cut to the, the next lap. We've caught up to world champion Sebastian Vettel in the Red Bull. Looks, looks as if we're going to try and stick behind him in the slipstream and look to make a move in the DRS zone as we start lap number six. We're going to try and stick close to Vettel here. But look at this. We're going to go do exactly the same move with Jensen Button. He seems to slow down coming out to the final corner. And we're now up into P5 as we start lap number six with the DRS zone. Cutting to the middle of lap number six, we're now behind the other Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo. We'll see if we can try and make a move into turn eight. Are we going to make a move? Yes, we are. I think this time I've got the move cleanly done this time. I didn't need to use a flashback this time around. I gave Ricciardo enough space. We're up into P4. Now we cut towards the end of the lap, going in for our pit stop behind the Williams of Bottas once again. We seem to have a massive rivalry when it comes to the pit stops. As every race, we seem to enter the pit, side, or not side by side, but one after the other. So let's see how we do in this pit stop race. Can we get in front of the Williams this time around? Or are Williams going to counter us once again? Let's hope the pit stop's good. Yes, it is. Which, but once again, we're behind bosses. We weren't able to jump the Williams in the pit stops. We have dropped down to seventh position as cars in front haven't made their pit stops. This time around, we don't seem to encounter the gearbox glitch as we go into turn one. But look at this, we very nearly make contact with Bottas. He's very slow out of turn one. It's like the, the, he's got cold brakes or cold tyres or something because I don't know how I was able to get so close to him. But look at that, he's accelerated away from me as we go on to the straight prior to turn number four. Sutil's, we've got Sutil just behind us in the Sauber. He's going pretty well in P8 there. Sauber looking to score their first points of the season. Going to try and stick close to Bottas going into the metal sector of the lap. Look at this, we're right behind the Williams. Williams, we made contact, I think, twice. Yes, we have. Made contact there. Looks like Bottas has spun out or something because Sutor has now overtaken him into P number seven. We're now into P6. We go wide going out of the final corner as we head on to the main straight to start lap number eight. As you can see, we've got several cars into in the pits here. We're going to make up a couple of positions. Look at this, we're going to have a, looks like we're going to have a drag race. With the Red Bull, I think there's a Red Bull in front. Yes, it's Ricardo. Has Ricardo jumped us? Not quite. We are just, we still maintain P3. And the only cars between us now and the race, possible race victory, are the two Mercedes cars. But I think they possibly are too far ahead, like they have been in the previous two races. I mean, I managed to catch up with Rosberg in the second race. But, of course, the first race was down to luck due to the back marker. As you see, we cut through to the... To the second sector. Look at that. Rosberg is about is seven seconds up the road. So I'm just trying to push as hard as I can to try and close the gap. We've gone wide going out into turn 10. We've made a very bad mistake that could have easily cost us a lot of time as we head on to the second DRS straight. We haven't got DRS obviously because there's no cars in front of us. So going to turn out. I'm just pushing incredibly hard to try and catch these Mercedes. I am catching the Mercedes, but I just don't think the rate is, is fast enough for me to make a move and get close enough to make a move. So we start lap number 9. My engineer is telling me about my tyre rate, so I've got to be careful in the high speed corners, which this circuit does have a lot of. So I've got to be careful to try and make these tyres last, as well as trying to close the gap. 
as you can see, we're going to go into start going into lap number ten, and we're pushing incredibly hard, continuing to push hard. Look at that. We're going to go into fast, rich fuel mix. We've got enough fuel, I think, to burn off to try and get to the end of the race and run in rich for the rest of the race. We're going to cut to lap number eleven. The gap is closing down, but apologies, the quality of the video doesn't let you see exactly what the gap is. I think it's around four or five seconds as we go into the second sector, turn eight, right-hander. I am just still pushing it as hard as I possibly can. I do see a dot in the distance, so hopefully we are try we are closing the gap as we cut to lap number 12. As we head on to the that main back straight with the second DRS zone is going into turn 11. We've understood why, though. We're continuing to push hard. As, as hard as, poss as we possibly can to close the gap. We cut to lap number 13. I think we've run out of time, but look at this. We've got a yellow flag in front of us. I think it's a yellow flag in front of us. There's probably some back markers. The green flag's just all right. But look at this. We've got three cars in front of us as we go into turn eight. I think that's both Mercedes. I think they're stuck behind a back marker of some sort. The back markers in this game are once again screwing the Mercedes, and I'm been able to catch up because of this. So we head into turn nine and ten. We're just taking it very cautiously look at this they're struggling to get past here i don't know who the back marker was but we try and it's going to stay behind the mercedes to make sure we don't get a penalty for overtaking under yellow flags i know it's a back marker but i wasn't 100 percent sure what the rules were but look at this we're going to try and go down the inside like we did with both ferraris on nico rosberg we're up into second place but we've made a mistake going into the right hand as we start second three we've gone wide of the circuit rosberg goes down our inside very nearly makes contact with us we're down to p3 we're going to try and stick as close as we can to the Mercedes and stay in the slipstream due to the Mercedes power being so much stronger compared to our Ferrari power unit. We're going to dive bomb down the inside into the final corner and we're up into second place here. The race win is possibly on. Looks like there's another back marker in front of Lewis Hamilton there. We could easily bet profit again from this like we did on at the, at the middle sector of the previous lap. But as you can see, I think Hamilton makes e like work of the back marker. I think that's a cage room in front. He hangs himself on right on the inside curb there. We've, I think we've lost us a little bit of time there. I think uh, possibly the ch race winner is over. I am just going to try and go for it though to see if we can close that gap and try and make a move on that final corner. As you can see, I've made a massive mistake going into turn four and I've probably cost my chance of winning the, this race here. The gap, I think I remember correctly, it's over a second by this point in the lap. So we're just going to have to push incredibly hard to try and catch Hamilton in this final two sectors to try and get this race win but also not make any mistakes ourselves to prevent us from being passed by the Mercedes of Rosberg behind us as you can see we're trying to close up to Hamilton as much I've taken too much of the curve and we've made a mistake going into turn 10 and Rosberg is right behind us into the DRS zone I think the race win is out of the window for us Rosberg's gone down right around our outside as we go into turn 11. I though cut the corner to try and maintain position. The engineer has given me a warning on that front though. I possibly could get a penalty if I cut, cut the corner again. As we cut towards the end of the lap, we are closing up to Hamilton. Are we going to try and make a move? I think we are too far back. If we had one more lap, I think we could have got the re a surprising race win. Damn it. I thought I had him. Congratulations to Lewis Hamilton on a wonderful drive today. It was a truly world-class performance, underlining his credentials as one of the best British drivers of all time. Apologies, guys. I wasn't able to get the race win today. As you can see, this is what the top 10 looks like. Hamilton first, Bianchi second, Rosberg third, Ricardo fourth, Vettel fifth, Raikkonen sixth, Perez seventh, Sutil in eighth, Magnussen in ninth, and Gutierrez in 10th. Sauber getting a double points finish there. We can see quite a few penalties. I think that was for Bottas and for Alonso. I think that was because of the contact we made prior to that. The two retirements were Marcus Ericsson and our teammate Max Chilson. So sadly, his streak of finishing races is over. We're going to cut to the Drivers' Championship as we go up to the top of the screen once again. We're going to cut to the Drivers' Championship any minute. Yes, we do. We're still in second place there. 
Ricardo and Rosberg up to third and fourth respectively. Raikkonen moves up into eighth place with the Force India of Perez and the Sauber of Suto moving into the top 12 of the championship. As we're going to cut to the Constructors' Championship, because of Williams' non-score today, we've actually moved up into third position ahead of the British team. Only Mercedes and Red Bull just ahead of us. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a very dramatic ending to the race. A quick heads up for the fourth race. I will be running on expert difficulty to see where I am and see if it's an interesting race. Because, of course, this series is all about trying to score as many points as possible, not winning the championship. But I want to see what you guys think as well. So, until next time, I'll see you for the next race in China.